Hello and welcome to another edition of Flair Prime. I'm Grant Coffey. Today we're going to look at the differences between vapor sampling and particulate sampling or swabbing, some of the pros and cons of each, and take a look at which one we think is better. With vapor sensor you have to understand that all chemicals, including solids and liquids, are going to give off a little bit of gas that could be picked up with the detector. With swabbing or particulate detection, we're going to actually have to have physical contact, usually used with uh, narcotics, explosive residues, um, but it's going to take some direct contact. With vapor sampling, you actually have to get the sensor in the plume. There's issues with that because the quantity and the quality of the gases in the plume are going to vary depending on environmental conditions. And there might be problems with false negatives with that. Vapor density issues with heat, with wind movement, uh, that's going to affect the quality of that sample you get. One other problem, when you're looking at explosives, there are some explosives that inherently have physical characteristics with a lower vapor pressure. Uh, those include HMX, RDX, PETN, some of the common explosives that are going to be a little bit more problematic when you're trying to get a good sample with, with a vapor wand. Now with swab sampling, it does require some direct contact, but it's not as influenced by environmental conditions like vapor sampling. However, you need to take the swab, which is fairly small, and sample a small area. And if you have a large area to sample, there's some issues with operator training, basically, that can improve the quality of your sample. But, again, one of the key things is direct contact, when you're looking at a scene with explosives, can be problematic if you're looking at a touch-sensitive explosive. So you have to get closer. That's the difference between that and the standoff distance that you can have with a vapor sampler. Let's look at the issue of sampling with the right equipment and technique at, let's say, the scene of a homemade explosives lab where you have precursor chemicals or finished product. The key thing is, is that these can be sampled at sites remote because the contamination can be transferred in minute quantities that you can't even see to remote sites that we can actually detect. Let's say an a, a explosives maker is handling the material, they're working on the material in the lab, they handle, and then that contamination that I just touched on my hands, we transfer to my hands. And in fact, as I walk away, I touch doors, I touch handles, will actually be transferred away from the site in quantities you can't see, but with the proper technique, you can take swabs and the proper monitor, you can actually swab, take samples off the hands of, let's say, a suspect, or swab a door handle, a knob, and then actually take it in a detector, place it in the detector, and actually pick up chemicals. So actually, which one's better? The big picture, vapor detection is a little bit tougher. Even though you have to get closer with this, Swab detection is pretty consistent. Think about the experience you've seen in watching a TSA agent swab for explosive residue and the stakes of detecting explosives before they board an airplane. Thank you for watching another edition of FLIR Prime.